Hi, my name is Jos Gerardin. I'm one of the founders of Yields.io, and today I would like to talk about bias in machine learning algorithms. Bias, as we can read in the dictionary, is the inclination or prejudice for or against one person or group, especially in a way considered to be unfair. In the context of algorithms, this definition has to be adapted in two different ways. First of all, bias in algorithms is not a conscious thing. It's actually driven mostly by the data itself. Secondly, measuring something to be unfair requires a certain degree of quantification. And this also needs to be addressed when guarding against bias in machine learning algorithms. Because this is a problem that is driven by the data, I'll start with two simple examples. Let's first assume that we build an algorithm to predict the probability of default, and we have a certain client segment where we have 1,000 clients in the data sample, and there's only 10 defaults. So a very naive algorithm could actually predict that the probability of default for that particular segment is exactly zero. This is a fairly good model because in 99.9% .9 of all cases, the prediction is actually correct. But given the fact that this data is highly unbalanced, meaning that there is only very few default events, this algorithm actually systematically underestimates the risk and therefore is considered to be biased. So as you can see, when we would have a new client segment in our data set, then in the very beginning and the early phases, we don't have a lot of data. So suppose that in this new client segment, we only have 10 clients and none have defaulted so far. We're using an algorithm that extrapolates to make a prediction on the probability of default. It's very much possible that that algorithm is going to extrapolate wrongly and assume that every client in this particular segment will have a zero probability of default. This example is a bit more intricate because it's not always easier to, to detect all the various segments in your client data set. Because of those subtleties, we see actually many examples of bias in algorithms in the press. One of the most famous examples is the one from Amazon, where they were using an AI to recruit new developers. And because historically, most of the developers were men, the algorithm developed a bias against women. And as you can see from the previous examples, this is very much data driven. So how can we fix bias in algorithms? Let me give you one concrete example from my own home country, Belgium, um, to make everything a bit more concrete. So in Belgium, there is actually three different languages spoken, Dutch, French, and German. Let's focus on the, simply Dutch and French, which are the biggest communities. So the northern part of the country is primarily Dutch speaking, while the southern part is French. So when you are a bank and you are developing credit decision models for Belgium, you should make sure that the results of the decision do not depend on the language that is spoken by the person who is applying for the credit. How can you do this? Well, first of all, you can enforce what is called unawareness, which means that we simply remove the language attribute, the protected attribute from the data set itself. The problem with that is that very often it is possible to reverse engineer the value of the protected attribute. In the case of Belgium, for instance, if I want to know what the language of a certain person, I can simply look up his address and with a very high degree of certainty predict the language that is spoken by that person. So unawareness is typically not a good guard against bias. A second approach is what is called demographic parity. In that case, you require that the output of the model is the same regardless of the value of the protected attribute. So in the case of Belgium, for clients which have the same attributes on everything except the language, we would require that the probability of default is exactly the same. Now, in some cases, this is not considered to be fair. Let's assume, for instance, that in Belgium, on average, the northern part would have a higher probability of default than the southern part. Then in that case where we ask demographic parity, this result would not be considered fair because in general, the southern part would pay for the lack of creditworthiness of the northern part. That's why 
very often the so-called equalized odds method is chosen. In that case, we require that the forecasting error of the model is the same independent of the value of the protected attribute. If this is of interest, you can find more information in the paper reference in this link. So how do we solve for bias using equalized odds in practice? Well, first of all, you have to list what are the protected attributes. What are the attributes for which you want to make sure that no bias exists? Then secondly, you can train the model on the full data sets and with the mathematical definition of equalized odds, you can actually measure the bias in statistical fashion. In a last step, what you can do is to correct the model output algorithmically after the model has been trained. So by using this very systematic approach, we first are able to quantify the degree of bias, and secondly, we're able to actually correct. This concludes my short talk about bias and machine learning algorithms. If you want to know more, please get in touch. Thank you.